Hello and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. I am Lemur and today we are playing Seven Days to Die. Specifically, we're going to be doing 10 tips and tricks that you all will enjoy, but make sure you guys subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Please give this video a thumbs up. And as always, if you have anything you want to add throughout the video, something you want to comment on, please leave it down in the comments down below. But let's go ahead and get into that 10 tips and tricks. Here at number one, we have hatches versus doors. Now, normally you would think I need a door in my location in order to have the proper uh, entrance and exits because it protects me and it should have more health than a hatch. Well, that's incorrect. So that's 2100 health. That's 2100 health. That's level three, by the way, steel hatches, just for you all to know. But your hatch has the exact same health as a door. So guess what? You want to put hatches down because you can shoot right over the top of hatches. So you can see I'm going to shoot the dirt right out there. And you can see me hitting that dirt out there, that dirt block. And it allows you to go in and out, but at the exact same time, it doesn't let the zombies in. You can continue to shoot them. Now, I do want to make a note when you're placing these hatches, please put them up to one side or the other. Do not put them up this way because you're going to see you cannot get in or out unless those hatches are not there. <laughs> so, and you can't shoot unless it's below, uh, but it is, does make it where you can't get in and out. And that's kind of something you want to note for yourself. So make sure you put those hatches either to the side of the wall so you can get in and out as a note. In at number two, we are going to talk about cube frames. Uh, cube frames are something that people don't understand as being as strong as they are. Um, we're talking about cube frames versus square frames. So up here, you can see that I have square frames uh, that I have right here. Uh, and then over here, I have cube frames. And they actually hold the same uh, sustainability uh, health-wise as the regular frame, uh, but you can shoot through them. As you see, I just shot the floor below and not the cube frame itself. I will plot our little thing, and there you go. You can see it but I didn't do any damage to the cube frame above. So for that purpose alone, you can see cube frames are better if you need to shoot. Now with that note, I wanna make sure I note here really quickly, do not, do not, do not do a cube frame roof on your building because when you get vultures coming in on day seven or at any time, they will spray acid inside your base. They can shoot through the cube frames and people just start screaming and running around going, ah! and then bad things happen. So always, always make sure to do a solid roof so that those vultures hit the top of that roof. If you want, put a hatch, you can go up and down. You can put them where you can shoot them through the hatch. I've done that in a couple of videos where you put the hatch and you open the hatch and they go to the hatch and you start shooting them uh, while they're at the hatch rather than having the whole roof open and acid falling on your face. Next, we're gonna talk about XP. Specifically, why you need to pick standard frame shapes over doing it directly to what you have. So for example, this is a concrete square that you can craft. You can place them down. You can see them right here. I have them in my inventory. You can craft them and place them down. You can change the subject, but I highly recommend you start from frame shapes. Yes, it causes you to have to do a little bit more harvesting, a little bit more looting, but the reason being is simply put, when I make that, I get zero XP. If I upgrade this one, I get 732 XP. If I upgrade this one, I get uh, 500 and some change, and then I get the 730 XP. You see where I'm going with this? If I go to this one, same thing, 220, 244, 732 total, and then it's 1464 total. So I made 1464 from that one. For those two squares, I made 19. So let's see what this one is. Fully upgraded, 1464, but oh, we got a little friend of candle here really quick. Then this one, ready? Here we go. All the XPs. And you can see how much more XP I gained from there. And I'll actually wait to do the bottom square. Uh, I meant to wait until the end, but let's go ahead and hit them all the way up. And you're gonna see I got 1659. Yes, it's not nearly as gap, uh, as big of a gap as you think it is, because going from steel, uh, from concrete to steel is the largest hunk of that. It's half of that XP. However, going all the way up, that little bit of XP over hundreds and hundreds of times makes a huge difference. So I highly recommend you start at frame squares and upgrade rather than starting at the top and not getting the XP for it, because XP is always the place where you get into a hold and a standstill. Next, I wanna to talk to you about funneling. And I wanna to talk to it in a very different way than what we're talking about. Normally you can see like we've done it on a horde base. I'll link to that video up here where I've done a maze base where they have to follow a certain path to get up and down and it works great. Um, in this case, I just wanna talk about like, let's say this is my building in the middle or whatever it is. And I've got all these spikes around the outside. Now, normally 
great. That that works fine. They'll help hold early on and all that kind of fun stuff. But even early on, this will help you uh, on the run. One of the biggest things is, and I'm leaving this gap here intentionally for myself, but assume there's spikes in there so I can get in and out without having to do any flying blocks over. But zombies can attack from this point, that point, that point, that point, that point, that point, that point. So I'm going to be chasing zombies during the fights like this. I'm going to be shooting over here, shooting over here, shooting over here, and shooting over here, right? Which it makes it me having to reassess and overwork to solve the problem. So simply put, if you go ahead and take a... You would do this around the whole base, but I'm just going to do it over here on this side just for the purposes of this video. So we're going to grab some concrete blocks here really quick and we're going to place them down. If I go ahead and place, you normally want to do this three high as a note because they can climb over two high pretty simply. And you leave a two or three gap completely up to you which way you want to go with it. You place this wall here, right? Just, this is just around my, my uh, spikes. Um, you don't even have to have spikes on the interior of this wall. It works in essence. And then technically you can just go ahead, grab some more spikes and just, let's say, for example, spike out this whole section as a note. So that the zombies, um, as I misplaced because the stripes count as a square for some reason, I, I don't understand that. But let's just assume that I've got spikes coming all the way out here. When I come in now, when those zombies come, they're coming down this alley only. So then if I have AP rounds, I'm just sitting here and I'm just a crouch and I just blast away at them. They're going to come right down this alley. I just focus on headshots, headshot, headshot, headshot. And that's all I'm doing. It funnels them into that point. So you're focused on where you're hitting them, not just trying to find the next zombie and hit them before they hit the spikes. So make sure you funnel your bases to where they come down to this. And this is including if you're doing a labyrinth base and anything of that nature, the better the funnel, the more... Uh, simplistic and ways they'll come in and make it easier for when you're shooting at them in a good manner. So I highly recommend using these walls and funnels as I said, make it three high, not two because they'll jump over too high just as a note. Next, we're going to spend a little bit of time in our inventory because there's a couple things in here that I think people forget about and we need to talk about. Um, I do want to be clear, obviously I'm shooting this video, so this is in creative mode, so you're going to see all kinds of weird things. Just note that I am in creative mode for this video just to show you this stuff. But cigars. So underrated. I even missed this recently until someone told me they do not share the same slot as nerdy glasses. I don't know why I thought they did. I, I, I knew they didn't, but I didn't even think about the fact that like nerdy glasses or your agility glasses or any of that kind of stuff. I don't know why I thought they did, but there is no reason not to always have a cigar on. That gives you that plus one strength and that bartering no matter what. So you always have it. You always have plus 10% bartering and that strength, which is important when you come to those skills. Because when you get to that strength tree, if you're trying to go all the way down, let's just say, for example, not mining 69er because that's not one of them, uh, but let's say we want to go into Skull Crusher all the way here, it requires strength level 10. Well, strength level 10 costs you a total of three points to buy. So in essence, you're saving three points by just putting a cigar on instead of a bandana. That's a big... That's three levels you have to save, and I highly recommend it. And on top of it, you're going to get hit perk points earlier in your strength tree. And for those of us that are not pushing strength, maybe you're going perception and you're a looter first uh, or something like that, you can put one more point in there and get two points in a mining 69er and all that kind of fun stuff while we're in here. I highly recommend it. Make sure you put that cigar in. Super important and super cheap to make. Up next, we're going to talk a little bit about some skills in here while we're in our inventory, as I said. Um, a couple of those are actually going to be right here. First off, Pack Mule. Put zero points in this. Zero points. Zero, zero, zero. Let me say it again. Zero points. If you look at my inventory, many of you are going to think, well, you modded this out and you totally have it. No. Through pocket mods and armor pocket mods, you don't need to do that to get the points in here. Yes, you may want to use less of these, but once you start having level sixes, you run out of things to put into your armor. So this is that opportunity. And in the amount of these clothes, you can go ahead and put, if you really want some insulations, you could trade these out for a triple pocket mod, put some insulations in here. That's all I'm saying is make sure you use your pocket mods over putting points into that because it makes it 10 times easier. You don't have to ever put the points into it. It's complete waste and a complete trap of a skill point. So please don't put that in there. Next, we're going to talk about the sexual Tyrannosaurus perk. We're going to talk about the healing factor, iron gut, and cardio, and why you must put at least one point in these. One point, that's right. Please put at least one point in all of these because they make a huge difference in the game for you to simply make it. First off, let's talk about healing factor. You have a faster metabolism, so you gain 
one health every 90 seconds with just natural healing. So even if you're just running around not taking damage, you don't have to use healing stuff. You're just gonna slowly regenerate some health and your injuries heal 20% faster. You can do all of these without putting any points into Fortitude at all. That's one point into there very simply. Next is going to be Iron Gut. You wanna put a point in here because you reduce the amount of food and water you use by doing stuff. You hold your breath longer and you reduce your chance of, become, of dysentery by 1%, which is pretty much knocks almost all of it out and your buffs from consumables last 10% longer. So if you eat something, it gives you 10% more time on that. Awesome, highly recommend it. It's a must, especially in the food side of things. Obviously you can keep going higher and higher and you can get all the way up to 25%. If you went into fortitude, great. If you don't, you still have that one point in there and it's super awesome and it's super cheap to buy. Next is cardio. I highly recommend you get at least one point in cardio also because you get stamina regen while sprinting by 10%. That means you're gonna gain more stamina while sprinting so you can just keep running longer and you're not as out of it when you're fighting something or doing something early on or in melee. Uh, the next one we're gonna talk about is sexual Tyrannosaurus. This one is a must use for everybody. I sometimes, and this is where I was talking about that cigar, you can get two points into sexual Tyrannosaurus very easily by getting one point into strength. You can have two points into it and it decreases the tool and stamina usage that you use through power attacks, normal attacks through melee and all that stuff by eight and 15%. If you do that three points, you ready for this? 15 and 30%. And if you kill something, you get 10% stamina back. Broken, absolutely broken that you get stamina back while you have, and this is simply put, while you have bare minimum points. You put one point in a strength and you've put two points in a sexual Tyrannosaurus and you're gonna keep regenerating stamina while you're using melee. I highly recommend these as tricks within the, um, the trees to go ahead and use. And those are the ones I feel like are must haves that every person doing, no matter what you're doing, should do and should have in there. The next one we're gonna talk about is actually going to be engineering. Now, many of us play this game with a lot of other people. If you play by yourself, you may wanna know this also. In engineering, there are some bonuses that you get um, if you read up on the advanced engineering, and we'll get to some of the other stuff later, but you can now craft and forge items within them 20% faster, and you craft glue cheaper. But if you keep coming down, anything you craft in the workbench, faster, 20% faster. Electrician, you forge all recipes at a 10% less cost for forge recipes. Crafting forge steel and electrical devices is 15% less. If you hit the next one, you can just see we're increasing it by 25. So all forge recipes are 20% less at the max level. Crafting forged and electric devices is 35% less. So if you have someone that's going engineering in group or you have it yourself, make sure that's the person starting all your crafting of your forged steel because 35% is a huge number. That means for every three that you craft, they will get four. Simply put, they will get four for your three. There is no reason not to do it. You can load it up, you can make your forges going, but let them hit the craft button. There is no reason not to do it. Um, also make sure that they're the ones put down the electrical traps. As you can see, they get 50% extra XP when they kill an electrical trap. Just a note. But that's really gonna do it for the inside the inventory class that we're gonna talk about. Now we're gonna talk about a couple things outside of the character um, and on the map again. So let's go ahead and check a couple of those out. All right, so I've seen some huge videos on looting and I'm gonna break it down here really quickly for you. Um, simply put, if you go to your character screen uh, right here, you can see it and you click these little bars that say core character stats, you're gonna see loot stage. And you need to understand something. Your loot stage is based off of where you are also. Now, points and lucky looter, having the right glasses, all important. I wanna show you what my character's wearing and I'm gonna show you his, um, you can see he does have nerdy glasses, but that does not change my looting status, and on skills, I do not have any points in the Lucky Looter, and I have a six because we're in the Grasslands. All right, just to show you exactly what we're talking about, I am sitting in the Wastelands, which is one of the two highest zones out there. The other one is the Snow Zone, just for, for those of you who are wondering. Uh, I still do not have anything different on me. Uh, my character, my skills are still zero, and we're gonna go back here and check the loot zone, and you can see it jumped up to 37. Now that's exponentially better as you get more points in the Lucky Looter, uh, the right glasses, and all that kind of stuff, but you can see the zone you're in that you're looting matters for how good your loot stage is, because the higher your loot stage, the better gear you get, etc., etc. so I highly recommend that you make sure you loot in the right places. Now, you can have your base in a different zone, just be ready to transfer or run over to the other section. 
Now, with that being said, one of the mistakes I made actually on this last time I started in Alpha 20 was I focused on doing quests within the zone for the four zone. I should have focused on quests and I might restart focusing on quests of doing them in like wastelands and stuff because then you are higher level trader level zones and your tier five POIs that you can reset, which we're gonna get to here in a moment, you can go ahead and loot them twice so and get that higher loot stage on it. So I highly recommend it, but let's go ahead, jump over and talk about what we're talking about when we say loot things twice. Okay, so now it's time to cover the last couple items that we have. First off is we're gonna talk about melee and we're gonna talk about some of the functional reasons um, that I play the way I do with melee and I don't take a lot of damage while I'm doing it. Um, simply put, when you go in and you want a melee, most people will sit there and just kind of try to hit punch them and slap them with their melee thing over and over and just stand there. What you wanna do is you wanna go in, swing and back off. Only time you wanna be in and on top of them is when they fall to the ground. When they do, you take advantage of that time down and then you back off as they start to stand up or you, and make sure you watch your stamina, that's the most important thing. So, for example, we're gonna go after this little guy right here. You can see him coming after me. Um, he's gonna come in. I'm gonna lead off with a power attack, hit him down. Okay, he's down, so I step in and I'm gonna take him out. Now, that was one way of doing it, but now I'm gonna do it without the power attack on this next one. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is try to find a zombie really quick so we can show you. There's one over here. And all I'm gonna use is the normal attacks and show you how you step in, step out, step in, step out, um, trying to use that functional ability to not get hit while you're hitting them. I'm not perfect at it. There are still times that I make mistakes with it, uh, but it is definitely the best method for trying to avoid taking damage. Now, when they're running, you just back up and keep swinging, and the more and more gap you have, the better. Um, if they're just walking like this, that's where this method works, uh, and you can kind of avoid taking damage. So. A uh, perfect example is because you can strafe. You can see I walk faster than they even most of the time move. Um, so I can come in, get ready to swing, swing, and back off. Come back in, swing, back off. Oh, he's down. I'm going to step in. But for purposes of this, I'm just going to show you it again. I'm going to go in, swing from a distance, back off, and there you go. And I didn't even take it. And I never even sprinted once during that whole time doing that. You can use the sprint button if you're doing power attacks, if there's a lot of them. Um, just keep an eye on that stamina if you have to switch to a weapon. But making sure you do your melee like that is the most important thing. Now, let's go ahead and jump in talking about the quests and double looting buildings. Okay, so I have a quest here, as you can see. It's just a fetch quest, um, but simply put, I just wanna show you how you can turn things into double looting. Uh, so simply put, you can go in here and I can grab all this stuff, or if I wanted to, I could actually like knock out this, or let's say I wanted to, that this was a great, uh, let's say I won multiple of these barracks chairs for some reason, or I wanted parts off of this uh, charcoal thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and take this out really quick. I'm not getting resources from it. I'm using it as an example to show you guys um, what you can do. I'm just going to shoot it really quick. Problem solved, right? So all that stuff is missing. I've looted this entire house as a point. Um, you harvest everything you can. And then when you go ahead and start the quest, it all comes back up for you. And you can go ahead and grab that, those same chairs again. You can loot the same thing again. Uh, all that kind of fun stuff. So make sure you loot Harvest everything and then start the quests um, is normally the best methodology for handling all that stuff. And then you finish the quest and you go turn it in. Uh, and then as you continue to do that, you're going to keep getting more and more loot. You get higher quests, which puts you to higher POIs. The higher POIs you get, the better loot quality you get, etc., etc. So that's what I'm trying to say. Make sure you do your quests if you're the looter. Make sure you're doing them in the right zone. Make sure you pre-loot before you do your quests. I highly recommend all of that. But... That's all the tips and tricks I have for you today. These are the must-know ones. I hope they help you on your journey to surviving in seven days to die. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy the channel and the content, please subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. If you have anything you feel like I missed or videos you want to see on this, go ahead and leave them down in the comments down below. But as always, I hope you have a fantastic day, and we see you on the next episode of Lemur's Corners.